Hey there, my name is Helper Wesley, and in this video, we'll be talking about events that relate to the Physics 2.0 behavior. This video builds off of the Physics 2.0 in-depth behavior video that went over all of the variables inside of the behavior sheet. You might be able to tell what I'm going to make by the end of this video based on the scene here. But let's start by going into the event sheet. To begin with, if I add a condition and search for physics engine 2.0, I'll be given a bunch of conditions that I can use to create events for this behavior. And then if I go to actions and click on an object with the physics 2.0 behavior, I'll be shown a list of actions that apply to that behavior. We can change the body settings, its velocity, its forces and impulses, in which a force is meant to be applied over time, and an impulse is meant to be applied immediately. So if you were going to use this to make a driving game, for example, you can use a force to speed up as you hold the acceleration button. But then if you were going to make a platformer, for example, you would use an impulse to jump. And you can also change layers and masks from in here as well. So I've really quickly created this to show you how these controls might be applied to a thing. Note that this is really simplistic. If you wanted to use this to create an actual character, you would add in maximum speeds for conditions and other things like that. But what we have here are some forces, not impulses, that will be applied over time while we're holding these keys. And then for rotation, we use a torque, which is a force that applies to rotation. And then to put the brakes on, we change its angular and linear dampening while we're holding the space key. So if I preview the game, I can move the object around by pressing these keys. And you can see how this object, which has a dynamic body, is able to move and collide with the static body of the scene around it. And now if you're curious to know how GDevelop determines the scale and gravity applied to objects, after you've given the Physics 2.0 behavior to an object, you can right click on your scene, open your scene properties, and you'll see gravity and scale. Gravity is pretty self-explanatory, 9.81 being the default gravity, but the scale is by pixels. And for the most part you'll leave this alone, unless your game is really tiny or really big. By default it's 100, which means that every 100 pixels is equal to 1 meter. If your scale is set wrong, you can get some weird results from the behavior. But now let's talk about joints. If we go to the event sheet, click to add an action, and search Physics Engine 2.0, we'll be shown a bunch of different joint actions. Joints basically pin two objects together, either at a distance or literally one over the other, and apply different logic based on which kind of joint it is. There's an example game that I linked down below that does a great job of showing you what each one does. But in this video, we're going to be using the Revolute joint. Revolute joint comes in two forms. Add revolute joint between two bodies, which pins two objects together, or just add revolute joint, which will pin it to the position in scene. So to do this properly, we're going to go to the object, open it up, and go to edit points. We're going to add a point on the object that we want to pin it at, and add the same point to the other object as well. And then we'll put both of those in scene. We'll add the condition at the beginning of scene, and then the action add a revolute joint to the moving part at the x and y position of the points we just put in. And then do that for the second object as well. Then we'll create another event with a condition if the spacebar is pressed, apply an angular impulse, which is just an impulse that applies to a rotation, of negative 60 to the first object, and then do the same thing to the second object, but with positive 60. And we'll make sure to disable the other controls. If I open up this revolute joint action, I can show you more specifically what we're doing. So the X and Y anchor are the X and Y points I made earlier. We've set angle limits to be on, so it can only rotate between the angle of 30 and 90, using the opposite for the other object. And then we have motor turned off because we don't want it to move on its own. If you turn the motor on and give it some variables, it's going to rotate around that point at that speed but we don't want to do that right now because we're using an angular impulse to rotate the paddle. And now if we preview the game, this isn't actually going to work right. 
both objects have the same layers and masks. So to fix this, we need to change the paddles to be on Layer and Mask 2 instead of 1, and this way they won't detect collision with each other anymore. And now they'll be able to move. So I can put the ball back into the scene, this time with a higher density than last time, so it acts more like a pinball than a bouncy ball. And I'll put some objects up there for it to bang into. And now when I preview the game, I can play something kind of like pinball. Note that the ball is on layer and mask 1 and 2, so it collides with both the paddles and the walls. One more example I suggest you go check out. It's a little silly, but it uses revolute joints with different maximum and minimum angles to create this effect. And don't forget to check out the joints example, so you'll be able to better understand how those work. Some of these joints can be really cool. This has been a tutorial covering some of the conditions and actions related to the Physics 2.0 behavior. Be sure to comment down below and tell us what kind of tutorial you want to see next. Maybe we'll add it to the pile. I have been Helper Wesley, and I'm glad I could help.